oh hey there's a there's a league of legends cinematic kind of it's the champion trailer for wild rift featuring pre-ruination callista which i don't know what's going to be in this thing uh i've I've not seen it yet but i figured if i'm gonna watch it i should record a reaction because hey free content for the content machine and some of you might be curious to see and i certainly am curious to see because man i'm just glad to see my girl get some fucking attention you know Callista is a really interesting character. She has some good stories. Like, especially the one on Universe that she has with Ledros. Like, her, her former love who's trying to sort of snap her out of her like, vengeance ghost possession thing that she's got. Like, that's a great, like, that's a, mm, that's a deliciously tragic narrative um, that I, I really wanted Riot to develop on more. But I guess, like... I mean, I guess it's it's it comes down to the Ruination novel, which, again, I'm pleased to see Riot actually following up a little bit on that fucking thing, because, frankly, I, I've, I have had trouble parsing out whether or not Riot even gives a shit about the novels that they themselves have published. So that's nice that, that pre-Ruination Callista gets a little... I don't know how much of it... It's a Wild Rift trailer. You never know how much of anything is going to be in them, but... But I'm just, it's just nice to see my girl. Like, yay, Callista. Okay, so this, this would be her, presumably this is her trying to get to the Blessed Isles. The Blessed Isles being a place which is protected by like these magical fogs that prevent most people from getting there. Like, I, I can't remember if they were magical in the sense of like they sense the intent of the people who are coming or whatever, but that like that's what used to protect the Blessed Isles before the ruination. Callista. Love and happiness could be yours. But are you willing to give up on your promise and leave your home? You would be a wise and just ruler. But how long would your reign be? Honor the promise you have made. But anticipate that darkness might ensue. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So who's talking to her there? Here she is arriving at the Blessed Isles. Okay, so I guess that's kind of it? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I mean, I guess... Uh... Huh, okay, they've they've made a few changes to her character design there. Not big ones, just Oh. Okay. Uh but yeah, beyond ruination. So apparently there's also they're doing like a PvE mode for her on Wild I fucking might have to play Wild Rift then to try and check that out. Cause Beyond Ruination. So we are that is that it's Wild Rift, of all things, that's following up on the Ruination novel is... <sighs> I mean, again, like, I, I don't want to relitigate my whole... Like, anger boner for the way that Riot has treated the... Like, the story department of their own games, but, like, that Wild Rift is the thing that actually follows up on the novel that they published about one of their champions... Is, like... Uh... Really? Like, right, you couldn't... So... Okay. Let's have a look. So that would be... Those are the sigils of Camavor, right? Yeah. So clearly here they are aping... Who did the animation? Created in partnership with Eddie TV. Okay. And two-way doing that. So let's, let's have a look at Eddie animation. What have they done? Gaming, let's see. They've done something for Teamfight Tactics. Beyond the Mist, Wild Rift, that's the one we just watched. Starfield, they did the one for Clove and Valorant. And they did the Legion Legends Briar cinematic and remakes Rumble. Oh, they're versatile. Because, like, clearly in, um, in, like, the cinematic we just watched, 
they are aping a little bit of that Fortiche style, right? Like, they, you can see that they're clearly, presumably Riot will have told them to do that. Like, will have told them, hey, could you, could you, like, we want to make arcane, like, the basis of all of League of Legends things going forward. Could you please emulate the house style of Studio Fortiche with this, like, hand-painted sort of, um, like, texturing and, like, like, uh, like painting style on on the way that the characters made, albeit not quite with Fortitious sense of like construction and style. And the again, I don't know how much freedom they were given. Like Fortiche, I think would make a much more interesting face for Callista than this. Um, although I do appreciate the aquiline nose, right? That's one thing. Like that's one thing about character design is one of my fucking bugbears is the fucking noses that you get on. So many female characters don't get to have noses with any kind of structure. It's the fucking, it's the frozen thing, right? Like with the nose is like this little, this, drip, this little curve that leads into a tiny little point that sits like just like a little button thing on the front of the face. And like, that's fine for like, for like many character designs. Like it's fine that the nose is not a prominent part of the character design, but it's such a fucking default, especially. And it's an anime thing as well, right? Like anime girls do not have fucking noses ever. Like. Fucking Nico Robin is is the is the massive exception to the rule, and I love her for that. But for the most part, anime girls just don't have noses, right? Like they have like these tiny little hints of like there's a couple of black dots on their face, and that's where their nostrils are. Like these little tiny tiny wisps of nothing in the middle of their face, and it's but noses are such a huge part of a face's character, right? Noses are a huge part of of how you define the structure. And the individuality of a face, because so much of the rest of the structure of the face, like, is shaped around it. And one of the things Fortiche are really good at, one of the things I really like about their style of character design is that they seem to value the, like, the, the, the power of a good nose to define a character design. So I appreciate this. I appreciate that Callista has, like, a nose ridge with, like, a, a visible indentation, like, that has a structure, that has, like, a, that has, like, a shape and a sensibility, um... In the in the in her character design, and I really hope that that's something from Fortiche that kind of takes off in character design. That we remember that hey, the nose is a tool that you can use to define a unique and interesting face on a character. You you don't have to just like flatten it out and erase it because that's what Disney and Moe blobs do. You can you can you can like play with that thing. You can do shit with it. Like you can make when a character has a very indistinct and very small nose that isn't very that isn't very present, that can be a unique thing about them rather than just the same as all the five fucking thousand other characters in the lineup. Like, because a lot of League of Legends champions, especially the women, it is that, like, that sort of convex, convex concave, whichever one, like, that curved, sweet little button nose is, like, it's the default in a lot of places, and it's like, eh, tedious. Anyway, that's that's besides the point. Um, clearly emulating the house style of Studio Fortiche a little bit here presumably told to do it and we're getting these scenes like so this is like a temptation of kaisa of kaisa Callista, not kaisa have i said kaisa like 15 times please tell me i haven't Callista. it's a temptation of Callista, sort of going through the idea that she could have like a family with ledros the idea that she could overthrow viego um that piece of shit and take over rule of camavor herself um as a just ruler and it seems to be i guess conceptualize as part of the defense systems of the Blessed Isles, that they sort of show her these visions, I guess, to either deter her or to test her righteousness and her mettle. Right, moments before reaching the Blessed Isles, Callista's faith, fate is written in the mist. Be there on 11th of April when it lifts. Well, that's today, actually. Hang on. Hang on. I have Wild Rift installed on my phone, but I haven't opened it in five billion years let me just i'm just i'm just gonna open while we're presumably just has to download like 10 updates and i'm just gonna take a look um in the in the phone app once it's loaded uh is that isolde as the galleon figure like did, did viego send her off <laughs> with a ship that had his fucking wife on the front <laughs> like is he is he that level of fucking wife guy uh, yeah, like i thought I haven't run it in months and months and months. Why is there a picture of a naked baby in the app store? No, what the fuck? What the fuck, actually? Hang on. I can't show you this, but that it's an app called Crazy Hospital. It's a game, I guess. And it's just like an, a baby with a f 
distressingly round ass being poked with like a cotton. What the fuck is this? Why the fuck is that the icon for your Jesus Christ? That uh that that feels gross. That doesn't feel good. What the fuck, Google Play Store? Yeah, okay, that, that kind of took me out of it. Like, Jesus, okay. Diego, wife guy. Did he send her off with, like, a galleon f uh, figurehead that is his wife? Because, like, he's, she's off to find a cure for Isolde. Honor the promise. Hang on, what's that thing over on the left there? What's the oh, that's Hecarim! Hey! So Hecarim stabs her in the back a lot. Like, all of his soldiers and men stab the shit out of her, out of her back. And I guess he's just like, oh, he's just hiding there in the shadows in the cloud. Um, behind the specter of Callista is like this, this Honor the wraith of vengeance. Made. Which is one of the things about Callista is like, the whole... The tragedy of Callista is that she she dies in this betrayal, and she becomes in the ruination, like in these roiling mists of like all of the spirits of the dead that are clamoring and trying to cling to life, and like trying to trying to like deal with the magical cataclysm that's unleashed. She becomes merged with so many wrathful, angry raging spirits that they sort of take her over, right? She becomes this gestalt consciousness that that can really only like that, that that can really only think in terms of extracting vengeance upon the world. And as Callista was originally conceived, that was really all she was. She was a vengeance ghost who did vengeance stuff. And people out in Valoran, like out in the various com uh, countries could sort of call upon her with a ritual to call upon the spirit of vengeance and give up their own spirits to become a part of her in return for Callista would murder the absolute shitting fuck out of whoever had wronged them, right? That was her original conception. Then all of the Camavor stuff with Viego and like her backstory and her own tragedy and all that sort of gets added on to the back of it. And the trouble with that for me is outside of like Hecarim, who's already dead and, like, a, a ghost himself. I don't... I just don't think Callista herself has ever had that strong of, like, a vengeance angle to her character um, in the way that they've conceptualized the play. And, uh, yeah, like, it's, it's... I haven't... Like, it's fucking wild since I read the Ruination novel. I should probably go back and check that out again. Uh... Because I was I was reading that novel really really fast because I wanted to get a review out and then I never did because ADHD. Um, so shit, maybe I should maybe I could do something like for the ruination novel on this channel. Like maybe we could just read it here and I could react to stuff as it happens. <laughs> Those would be some long ass fucking videos. Would you watch that? Would anyone watch that? I kind of don't think so, but you know, fuck it, whatever. Let's that's that's an idea. If I ever run out of ideas. I do like the rendering here. Like, this is one place, like, I don't think Fortiche, again, would render it this way. Like, you can see that, like, Eddie TV has their own, like, approach to some of these things. Because Fortiche, I think if they were rendering a scene like this, they would do a lot more 2D animation on it. Um, rather than, like, a lot of these 3D composited yeah, effects. Um... Uh, that's, so, that's sort of more in their style, is, like, that, 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 that fusion of 2D and 3D. Especially for, like, effects animation, they like to use 2D. But, there is this. So, what do they do here? Because, like, Eddie TV clearly can do 2D animation. They've they've demonstrated that in, in some of their other work. Um, but this, to me... It looks like 3D animation that is being... Yeah, no, it's definitely 3D animation. That's being... Like, that's had the uh, contrast turned up all the way to 5 billion. Nice facial animation there. Like, I like the little subtle micro-expressions, like the anger and, like, the little... It overwhelms her a little bit. She kind of has to look off to the side to sort of try and strengthen her resolve against it. Like, this, this, this threat, this narrative of the transformation she will undergo if she continues. 
But like, so th- this is this is still 3D animation, it's still a 3D model being animated. But because it is rendered in this flat style, because it's rendered with this like like hyper flat uh, silhouette style, the animators have to take account of that, right? Like they can't rely on foreshortening. They can't rely on like color and texture or anything to make the animation readable. And you can see them working around that a little bit because like I will bet you money that if you rendered this pose out with like color and lighting and all that, it wouldn't look very good. Like I, th- I think that pose would probably look a little bit weird and awkward, but because it's in silhouette, the animators can like play with it a little bit more. Um, and fuck with like like proportionality a little bit more to create like that shot of the ghost of Callista hurling a spear forwards towards herself, um, which is like that's quite nice. Also, I'm kind of in love with that. You see that little bit of speckling on the inside of her eyelid. I love that as a texture detail. Like that that's that's a, a tiny little thing that's like traditionally you would say oh that's an imperfection, right? Like that's 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 a blemish. That's something that, and the instinct would be oh airbrush that out. Like get rid like why would we want to have that on the character? But like the little things like that, little blemishes, little little modelings, little dapplings, that's what gives f- f- like character to a fucking face, right? Um and that's one of the things that like that that Fortiche really brought into their animation style and really brought out which is where like i have my problems with like arcane being the central canon of league of legends going forward but if more animation just is allowed to and i want to say fortiche is not the only studio on earth that has this kind of animation style right like they're not the only people who are working in this like mixture of 2d and 3d they're not the only people who are working with hand-painted textures like they weren't like the first people to ever do this in the same way that the people who made spider-verse weren't the first people to ever mix like high low high and low frame rate animations and like stylization the way that they did right they weren't the first to do it they're not the only ones to do it they're not the only place that this is taking inspiration from necessarily like like, uh, um, Eddie TV themselves have also experimented with that kind of thing. I think bef- probably before um, Arcane, frankly. Let's go down the list here. Oh, they did something for Valhalla as well. They were on Team of Tire Tactics when Forged. The Agent trailer. Oh, they did the fucking. Did they do the original Wild Rift trailer? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. They did the one for the elemental rift thing. Okay. Ooh, they did Sparks of Hope. Shit, they've done a lot of... I need to see... Hang on. This is... I'm changing the subject of the video for a second here. I need to see what have they done for content. Like, besides being like... Did they do anything for Love, Death, and Robots? They feel like the kind of studio that might have if they were around at that point. Slightly slow website there. There we go. Mantis Garden. McDoom Music Tour. Well, yeah, that would be. Ooh. A bunch of ads? Which, like, that makes sense. That's what most animation studios make their money doing. They did something for Just Dance. Louis Vuitton. Periple Encore. <laughs> An insurance company in the sort of, uh, what's it called? Missouri flat, something like that style. Music videos, I guess. Oh, they did like uh, something for a fragrance thing for Ariana Grande. They've done a bunch of shit. They really have. What I'm trying to get a sense of is like how far back does their history go? Oh, what was that? Hang on, hang on, hold on a sec. Oh, okay, I need to I need to turn the audio off on that because otherwise I'm probably gonna get copyright claim. But that's oh, that's quite nice. It's like a sort of little '90s anime homage thing. They did a thing for gorillas. Oh.
Okay, here we're probably back to the beginning of their history, which is like... Do shorts... Okay, let's let's look at the earliest one. Was that before Arcane? Like, have they been around before Arcane, or are they a more recent studio? Let's see. Oh yeah, six years ago they were around before Arcane, so they probably have experimented with that on their own. Because like they definitely have a huge stylistic range that they work within. Like, look at this. Again, gonna have to turn the audio off. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's rotoscoped. And then they paint it over. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Like that painter. That's like some fucking that Van Hoff movie they did. Anyway, getting distracted by the studio. Um. So, that's the Blessed Isles. Is that the Vault of Halia over there, or is that another place? That's the Blessed Isles looking very much exactly like it does in its concept art. Like, that's well well realized. Like, I don't know if Riot has, like, internal assets just around from that, that they sort of send out to the studios uh, to use in the in in trailers like this, but, like, I remember the concept art for the Blessed Isles, and that looks, that's like a pretty fucking exact rep uh, reproduction of what that place looks like. Which is, like, nice to see. Okay. Cool little cinematic there. I wish there was a little more to it than <laughs> than just, like, Callista stands on a boat and a ghost talks to her for five seconds, but... Yeah, that's quite nice. And I will say, like, the fucking the constant comparisons to Studio Fortiche and all that, I really like... Um, this rendering style in the clouds. Like, the way that the ghost is rendered, like, out of these cloud shapes. It reminds me a lot of the way that um, mist wraiths are rendered in uh, Legends of Runeterra, which perhaps might have been intentional. Um, they might have drawn something from that. But, like, that, that, like, fuzzy outline really, like, it does make the wraith in the sky look suitably kind of terrifying but also like weirdly as though it could be kind of part of the clouds right like it could be a trick of the eye a little bit not completely but like it has enough of that sense of like oh, okay like maybe this is like an imagined ghost that someone is seeing in a lightning flash kind of thing that you could sort of make that argument yeah anyway that's a cool cinematic uh wild rift have you updated yet You have. I need to log in. Oh, no. Okay, fuck. Uh, the fuck is my password? Okay, shit. I'll do that for a later video. Like, if there's something on... Uh, I'll find a way to screen record that, and, and, and I'll upload that later if there's something there to react to. So, yeah, that was a cool cinematic. Bye!